morning everyone. Um, my name is Mark Flanagan. Um, I, wor I work for Dell. Um, I look after our IoT business um, in EMEA. So what I wanted to talk about today is just to give you a little bit of an idea on what we're doing in this area, the types of markets we're going after, some of the actual projects we're working on, um, just to give an idea of, 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 of the kind of things that are, that are going on in the market. A little bit about the market itself, you know, try, trying to determine the market um, for IoT is like trying to determine the market for plastic around 1940. Um, people could see it was going to be potentially massive. Um, and certainly we, we, we see that internally within Dell. I mean, there's so many different industries that can benefit from this kind of stuff. The size of projects are, are off the scale. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're working on projects where customers are looking for, for millions of, 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 of gateway devices to, to run various systems and so on. Um, a little bit about our, our, our perspective on the market. So, consumer is a space we're not going after. Um, it's very much the industrial, commercial side of things is where, is where our big focus is going to be. Um, that's where we see the progress we made. Certainly the consumer side of things is helping to create a lot of noise about IoT, a lot of hype in the market. Um, but the consumer industrial side of things is very much um, where we're going to play. From how we look at it, um, we look at IoT very much as information technology meets operations technology. And when we're talking about operations technology, we mean the technology in your customers where IT aren't involved. So whether that's the system, the building management system running your building, it could be the technology in a manufacturing environment running the machines and so on. That's what we class as, as operations technology. And we see IoT as bringing these two worlds together, information technology and operations technology. Um, and using, using the, the, te the technology within IT to help bring improvements to the operations technology world, whether that's reducing rejects on a manufacturing line, improving output, being able to predict when a, when a, a machine in a factory is going to break using predictive maintenance technologies and so on. Um, that's, that's, that's what we're talking about here. From an approach of how to get started, a lot of customers come to us, how do we, how do we get started in IoT, what should we do, what's, what's, a, what's a, good, a good area to get involved in. Very much start out with something small. Don't go and try and boil the ocean on your first IoT project. Do, 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 do something internal, keep it small. Um, architect for analytics. So based on the data you're going to analyze. So, so in I IoT you may have a gateway, some sensors creating data and you want to analyze that data to see, see what the benefits could be. Architect for that. Design the solution for that. Um, security. Security is a big one. Security is the number one reason companies are nervous about getting into IoT. If you have a whole bunch of sensors in a factory that figure out a more efficient way to run that factory, your five biggest competitors are going to want, want to know about that as well. So security is a big, big, big area here. Um, just to talk a little bit around the areas, um, the, the areas we see the, the, the most opportunities in. Um, the first is the whole smart building, smart city side of things. Um, smart building is a huge opportunity for us at the moment. Um, building The whole area of building management systems and so on is quite... Technology quite hasn't caught up in that industry yet and it's only starting to happen now. And there's a lot of legacy providers in that market who are, 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 are making very large profits and so on out, out of legacy type solutions. And IoT is helping to shake that up. Um, that, that's a big opportunity for us at the moment. Smart City as well um, is another one. Um, a, a partner of ours recently won a, won a Smart City project over in Lithuania. Um, that'll see them putting in solutions around smart traffic, smart parking, smart retail, a whole lot of other areas that can all be interconnected to really give significant benefits. Um, mentioned manufacturing briefly earlier on. Um, so the main, the main areas of focus here are, are, are there's kind of two main areas. One is using IoT to make manufacturing more productive. Maybe that's increasing the output or reducing the rejects and so on. And the other side of things is the whole predictive maintenance side of things. So you could have very simple example. You could have vibration sensors on a machine in a factory. And based on that vibration profile, a gateway can detect when a machine is going to fail and give you advance notice. Um, 
We're working on a, on a, on a, on a large project at the moment um, with a worldwide mining company who want to attach gateways and sensors onto all their mining machines all over the world so they can predict when those machines are going to break so they can have the engineer with the right part in the right part of the world before the failure actually happens. And that, that, that project is going to save them tens of millions of dollars every, every year. Transport, another very interesting area, and um, the whole idea of being able to put IoT gateways onto trucks that can do everything from monitoring where the truck is, where it's going, efficient routes, monitoring the cargo in the back, if it's fresh food, is it at the right temperature, all that kind of stuff. Um, being able to, again, that links in with some of the smart cities, smart port stuff, where a truck's able to teleport how far away it is, so the port can get lined up with the cranes to unload it, all that, all that kind of thing. The last one here, and uh, quite relevant to in, in, in Ireland, is the whole smart agriculture. Um, so a lot of a lot of I I I interesting um, developments going on here. Um, you know, autonomous machines, connected animals, things like milking machines, which can analyse the milk to see if the diet of the cow needs to be changed, and so on. A whole lot of very very interesting um, areas taking place here. Just to talk very briefly on, 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 on gateways, what a gateway is, what it does, why you use it in an IoT solution. Um, what a gateway does, it connects and aggregates data sources. So if you think of a factory and you've got 200 sensors around that factory measuring temperature, humidity, light, airflow, whatever it might be, that's generating a lot of data. You don't necessarily want all that data being sent up into the cloud over an expensive telco network so on. You only want the relevant data. So if it's monitoring temperature and the normal operating temperature is 20 to 25 degrees, you don't need it sending back messages the whole time that the temperature is 23 degrees. It's only when things start to go outside the norm. So that's the kind of thing that a gateway can do. As well, gateways can do things like, like edge analytics. So a gateway could be monitoring monitoring temperature and humidity in a factory and it sees the temperature goes above a certain level, the humidity goes above a certain level, so I'm going to open the windows. So that you, you can build intelligence um, into these devices. Um, very briefly on, on, on what, what, what we, we've recently launched in the market is um, our first gateway device, it's called the Gateway 5000 and, and the purpose of this device, if you think about the slide I showed, showed a few minutes ago showing information technology and operations technology, this device is designed to bring those two worlds together. So the type of connectivity on this device, a lot of the connectivity is not what you'd see on your, your laptop or desktop or server. You've got things like RS-422, RS-485, CAM bus, Modbus. So for those of you who are involved in manufacturing, you'd be very familiar in those, with those terms. In IT, we're not, we wouldn't be so, so familiar with them. But what this, this box is doing, that means it's able to pull in information from those type of devices. It's able to pull in information from machines in a factory, combine that bring it into the IT world, run analytics, so on, figure out better ways of doing things. Um, again, a little bit on the device itself, rugged enclosures, um, CAN bus, you can do mesh networking on this. So a lot of industrial networking uses different networking technologies like Zigbee and Z-Wave and so on. Again, don't want to get too technical on that. Um, Again, the different types of operating system you can run on a device like this, you know, different versions of Linux or, 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 or Windows 10 IoT. Um, just to give you a bit of a view of, of the IoT landscape as we would see it in, in, in a typical IoT environment. Um, a lot of people are kind of focused on the cloud and the analytics side of things, but just to show what it's like from the very edge, from the very edge you've got devices, um, it could be sensors, it could be CCTV, it could be a vehicle sending back information. They're all sending information on different protocols, you see CAN bus, BACnet, Modbus, Zigbee, SCADA, so on. And that information all gets sent back into a gateway. And then the gateway is able to aggregate the data. Um, you may want to apply levels of security and so on, and then send it back into the cloud. Um, some of the things we do there, we have solutions like Boomi and Statistica, which allow you to standardize that data and run, run those analytics um, to figure out, 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 out better, better ways to do things and so on. Um, 
to kind of run through, and, and this is the key part of the presentation, is to kind of show some of the some of the projects we're doing um, and, 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 and what's involved in them. So this, this is a project we're doing in the UK at the moment, and um, this is with a facilities management company. This company manages about 2,000 buildings, and they have, as part of their contract, every two to three weeks, they have to send out an engineer into the boiler room of those buildings. The engineer goes in, he checks carbon monoxide levels, carbon dioxide levels, checks there's no leaks on the floor from any of the tanks, etc., and goes off and comes back three weeks later. Every time he does that visit, it costs about 200 pounds sterling. So what this solution is designed to do, we've put in a Dell gateway with a bunch of sensors attached to it. The sensors can, me can measure liquid on the floor, humidity, temperature, carbon monoxide, carbon, mono carbon dioxide levels, um, intrusion, there's a door sensor on the door. So now what's happening is they don't need to do that visit every three weeks anymore. There's a SIM card in the gateway and if the gateway detects something out of the, out of the ordinary, it'll flag it back to base. So the gateway will send a message, I'm the gateway in the Barclays Bank on Main Street, I've just detected liquid on the floor please send out an engineer. So the savings for the facilities management company are massive. If you think at the moment, 2,000 buildings every three weeks at 200 pounds a go, that, they, don't, they don't need to do that anymore. They only now need to go out when there's an actual problem. The other benefit is, in the old model, what happens if a leak starts 10 minutes after the guy leaves? It's not gonna get picked up for another three weeks. So this, this, this is running at the moment, um, has a proof of concept um, in about five buildings um, in London. London, um, and you know we're, we're, we're expecting this to roll out to a, a, a full project very soon. Um, another one here to give an example. Um, this is in the manufacturing space. Um, this is actually a project that's that's running here in Ireland um, in a factory down in Cork. Um, a company called Alps Electric, um, large Japanese multinational, who make automotive parts. And in this factory. They make um, the automatic gear stick assembly for, for a very premium brand of car. And they had a challenge that when they were manufacturing these gear sticks, the last part of the manufacturing process um, is an area called paint and lasering, where they, they paint on whatever the piano black or whatever color it's gotta be, and they laser on the logo. And they're having an issue with rejects in that area, where rejects could be as high as 80%. Because the part is a life or death part, they can't go and scrape off the paint and start again. They have to reject the part and, 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 and start all over. So work, working with one of our partners, Action Point, um, we built a solution that monitors all the elements that go into the gear stick. It also then monitors a whole load of environmental areas in that paint and lasering area. So it looks at temperature, humidity, air pressure, airflow, particles of dust in the air and so on. And, which is a big analytics engine, a big analytics company Dell bought a couple of years ago. And what's happening is Statistica is taking in all that data, all that environmental data, combining that with all the manufacturing data coming, coming from the action point systems. And it's starting to come up with some really interesting insights. So Statistica is able to go, on the 1st of May, the temperature outside was quite low and the temperature in the factory dropped four degrees and the humidity dropped quite low. And we saw the reject rate drop from 80% to 60%. So we can now determine that you need to actually cool that area and, and put in some dehumidifiers to help reduce that reject rate. So it's like a process of ongoing improvement. There's a number of these outcomes that have come out on this project. Um, it's very interesting. I went down there a couple of weeks ago. I met the guy who runs the whole plant. He was quite skeptical at the start of the whole project. He, he, he was asked to do it by HQ in Japan, and he's completely converted now. He showed me two numbers on a dashboard on the screen and said, these are two of the most important numbers I need in my factory. He said, three weeks ago, I didn't know I needed them or how to get them and now look where I am now. So it, we're seeing huge, huge benefits on this on this one. Um, so that, that's the manufacturing one. The last one, um, just to kind of show you here, is one we're doing and um, we've a proof of concept running on this in Germany at the moment and this is a whole project around remote asset management. So an asset in this case could be an ATM for a bank, could be a mobile phone tower, could be an electricity substation. So again what we're doing here, we're working with one of our partners, um, Azeti, who do this remote asset management software and what the solution here for, for ATMs is doing, we're putting a gateway 
into each ATM like this. The gateway has got some sensors. The sensors measure gas. So the most popular way in Europe to rob an ATM is to pump gas in behind it and then blow it out of the wall, believe it or not. Um, and how the, how the bank find out about it is when they get a phone call from someone saying, will you take your ATM out of the middle of the road? So it's a, it's a big issue for, for, for banks across Europe. So what we do is we put a gas sensor, a gateway, and a vibration sensor. We also put in a CCTV camera and a speaker. So what happens is, um, the, if the sensors detect something, it detects gas or vibration, it switches on the CCTV camera. There's a SIM card in the gateway. So back in the control center for the bank, they get a screen up. They see two guys with crowbars trying to rob the bank. They've then got this, they brought the ATM. They've then got this speaker solution that they can actually talk to them. So they can say, hey, you in the blue t-shirt and you in the white shirt, get away from the ATM. The police have been called. They're going to be here in about 30 seconds. That's proven to actually stop 99.9% of ATM robberies mid-flight before they actually get a chance to do anything. From a bank perspective, that means the bank can go and renegotiate all their insurance across their, their ATM um, estate. 